Welcome back to the Galley of the Sun. It's my favorite day today. It's pizza day. And it's an extra special day because I get to bring you the next video in our pizza series. So today we're gonna make a stuffed pizza. So if you think of Papa Murphy's, they do a stuffed pizza, this is ours. Oh, it's just fantastic. Let's get started. First, the pizza sauce. We're using the same sauce I used in the St. Louis style pizza, which that video can be found which side is it? It's over here. So you can go to that link and the recipe for that pizza sauce is in the description. So today we're doing a different dough though. So what I have in front of me is three and a half cups of all purpose flour, a quarter cup of olive oil, two tablespoons of yeast. Do not use fast rising. This is normal rising yeast. Two tablespoons of honey, which we're going to use as the sugar to activate the yeast and a half a teaspoon of salt. So, working in the KitchenAid mixer, those of you who've seen Charlotte's video, you'll know that this thing is 26 years old. She loves it, we couldn't live without it. First, I have a cup of hot water. Uh, water should be between 85 and 115 degrees. Uh, any cooler than that and the yeast won't activate any hotter and you will burn it. So right now, we're sitting 119, waiting for that to cool off, because uh, as you may have heard in some other videos, our water here comes out really hot, like 140 degrees when I measured it. So it's coming down slowly, and uh, as soon as it gets there, we'll get started. All right, 115. It'll cool off a little more when it hits the bowl. Into the mixing bowl it goes. Next, we take the honey and the salt, and we're gonna mix that together and get it well incorporated, broken up into the water. In goes the salt. We're using the dough blade today. Lift that up. Set it on a good medium high speed and then uh, we'll wait, give it about five minutes to get mixed up and then we'll add the yeast. Okay, that looks good. Now we're gonna add the yeast, put it on medium and mix it for about five minutes. You may need to scrape the sides during this to get the yeast to make sure that it's submerged in the water. We'll, we'll see. Okay, that looks good. Now we're gonna let it sit for five minutes to let that yeast finish activating with the sugars and the water. Uh, what will it look like afterwards is kind of a foamy, frothy surface. Uh, you'll know that the yeast is activated. So we'll see you back in five minutes. Okay, it's been about five minutes. The yeast is looking great, nice and frothy. You can see it's starting to see some good growth. So we're gonna continue on. Next step, need one cup of the flour. Add that in. And the quarter cup of olive oil. We'll turn this on low. Start drizzling. Until this is nice and incorporated. And then add the rest of the flour in, half a cup to three quarters of a cup at a time. Just continue spinning that until you don't see any uh, dry flour left and then add some more. Add about another three quarter cups of the flour. Put it back on that medium low speed. Let it mix. Might have to scrape down the edges here shortly. We'll see. Looking good. Let's put another three quarter cup in. Now, if you don't have a stand mixer, you could definitely do this by hand. Uh, use a good sturdy spoon uh, when mixing it. But the stand mixer with the dough blade definitely makes this 
so much easier. The dough blade does all the hard work with uh, kneading it. We're gonna do just a little bit once it's fully mixed, but very, very little. Then we're gonna get it into a bowl, so. Now, if your dough's looking a little dry, you can add a little water to it. Just do it in about one tablespoon increments and then let it mix. Reverse of that, if it's looking a little wet, you can add a little extra flour and you just use the same increments. And I can already tell it's gonna be a little dry, so I'm gonna get a little water and uh, get ready to add it. There we go, that's looking good. You can tell when the dough all comes together but it doesn't look wet, the dough blade will start spinning it around, kneading it building up those bonds, we'll let it run for a couple minutes like this and then we'll pull it out, knead it a little bit and get it into a bowl. Don't wanna add any more flour to it. We're just gonna knead it. Make sure those bonds are nice and uh, strong. mixing bowl, give a little shot of olive oil, that in there. I'm going to cover this. I'm going to spray the underside of the plastic so it doesn't stick uh, to the dough. And then we're going to let this sit for 45 minutes and it will double in size. All right, we'll see you in about 45 minutes. The dough has been rising for 45 minutes. We're going to open it up, take a look. Oh yeah, it's definitely doubled in size, nice, gassy, kind of like Mike after uh, Chili Dog Day. Yep, it's looking good. So now what do we do? We're gonna beat it down. So, punch that down, pop that, roll it around. It doesn't need any knowing. Uh, it doesn't need any kneading, right? We're just gonna get that gas out. Tuck it back in there, cover it back up. Let it rise for another hour to hour and a half. And then we'll be ready to make some pizzas. So I failed to mention earlier, this pizza recipe is great for regular pizza and it normally makes two crusts. But since we're doing a stuffed crust and it's gonna have a layer on the bottom, your toppings, and then a layer of crust on top of that to bake, kind of like a calzone, right? This is enough for one. I'm actually making two of them today. So I've got another set of dough set aside. That one, I added a tablespoon of granulated garlic and a tablespoon of oregano that I rubbed really fine into the a dough and I subtracted two tablespoons of flour. So it's about equal. Um, so that'll be a nice herb and garlic crust to uh, try also. So we'll get a shot of both of them at the end and uh, see which one turns out best. So another hour, hour and a half rising, it'll double up again and then we'll move on. Meanwhile, I'm gonna prep the toppings, which today we're gonna use pepperoni, sausage, red onion. It's my favorite, same one I did uh, for the St. Louis style. It's just a great overall topping mix. And maybe on the other one, we might put some pepperoncinis because Charlotte loves pepperoncinis and uh, we'll see how it turns out. All right, so we'll see you in about an hour, hour and a half. All right, we're back. The dough's risen for another hour, hour and 10 minutes. It's looking perfect. Let's go ahead, get these crusts made, get it in the pan. We're using a nice, thick, heavy duty pan, pizza pan. I found that this keeps it enclosed the best when you're doing this stuffed pizza. Uh, this is a really good one. It's by Lloyd's Pans. Is that right? Lloyd's Pans. Yeah. Uh, you can get it on Amazon. It's not too expensive. Okay. Oh, this is the plain crust. This is a 14 inch pan. So it'll make a pretty decent thickness of crust. So one of the things when the kids were growing up, they loved to see dad do was toss pizza. So uh, we'll see how how that works out, what could possibly go wrong, right? 
So we'll get this spread out. Oh, it's been a while. Yeah, woo, getting flour everywhere. All right, let's get this out. Try to get in a nice, nice circle. All right, probably need a rolling pin here. All right. Whew. Use this nice French rolling pin that Char has. Roll it, spin it about 45 degrees, flip it over. Keep that going until you get roughly a circle. A little bit larger than your pan. Because you want it to be able to set in there and then put your toppings in, put the top layer of crust on and then curl it over to seal it. Yeah, that look, that's looking good. All right, now, this pan doesn't need much oil at all. Just a touch, wipe it around. All right, we're gonna set the crust in. Press it into those edges. Okay, sauce. Remember I said this is the sauce from the St. Louis style pizza, right? We go nice and thick. All the way to the edge. Topping, good mozzarella. Put a nice base layer down. And the perfect pizza toppings. Plenty of pepperoni. about that perfect right red onion want these spread out a lot you want it to cook and get a nice little crunch you don't want too much onion in each bite Italian sausage I it's just this is just store-bought I cooked into little sausage balls so that every bite would have a nice meaty chunk Now, almost forgot. This is some really good Parmesan Romano. Get that on top. Maybe a little more mozzarella. Yeah, that looks good. And the second crust. Oh, this one does not need to be bigger than your pan. It should be just about the same size because you're gonna lay this in on top and fold those edges over. Just looks good. Bring that in here, set that in. You're gonna roll the edges. Into the oven, preheated at 425. It'll take 20 to 25 minutes. But before you do that, we're gonna put a little bit of olive oil on top, sprinkle a little bit of Parmesan, give it a nice little finished look. Spread that around, it'll give it a nice, help it brown. And as I said, just a sprinkle of that Parmesan Romano. All right, into the oven. Uh, about 22 minutes uh, in the oven, came out really nice, crisped up, it was all done. It's been sitting for a minute or two. Now the most challenging part of the whole thing, probably getting it out without burning yourself. Uh, so get some hot mitts on here. Got a pie. Woo, there we go. All right. Doesn't that look pretty? 
Let's give it a cut, have somebody give it a taste. Oh, look at that. All right, we'll get the director in here, let her have a taste, see what she thinks. Other than being hotter than Hades right now? Very good. Very good. Excellent. All right, we get the thumbs up from the director. It means we're all done for the day. Hey, if you like what you saw today, hit that like button. If you want to continue seeing new videos that we put out, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell for the notifications when those new episodes come out. Until next time, we'll see you later at the Galley of the Sun. <laughs>